Hello everyone, this is an exciting stuff. We're going to check out WAN 2.1 VACE Control Net Reference 2 video. It's another method in the VACE video series part 3 for using Control Net as the video motion guide. And this is something that looks like animate anything. Of course, it's also coming from Alibaba. They've put this in the latest update of VA, which is now one unified model to do all these video edits, including in painting, out painting, reference to video, and also control net motions and video to video. So, in this video, we're focusing more on control net as the guide, just like what we've done before in Animate Diff using control net V2V. We're using control net as the guider as well. So, as we've talked about, reference to videos is where we have multiple objects or subjects and combine them into our generated videos. You can also put different motions because this is based on object or subject references and then put that into a video, generate text prompts, and create short clips. And in ControlNet, as you can see, this burry messy draft video I've generated before. And I did it on purpose in testing to show the control net post skeleton of two characters. I've tried it out using different contexts in VACE to segment two different control net open pose characters and create two different characters in fast motion scenes using styles like 3D animated styles. And this generates something like this, of course, in the, you know, the good old way. Using the TikTok dance stuff we've seen in YouTube shorts, we're also able to create two characters dancing. Right now, not only one, but even multiple characters can use this method. You can change the backgrounds, outfits, and unique outfits for each character, like in these examples, to generate something like a TikTok dance video. So the workflow I'm going to work on, and it's still got a lot of room for improvement and updates, is this workflow that I call VACE Control Net Reference to Video. Why is that? Well, as we have to use control net as the DW pose or whatever control net preprocessors we can use for motion guidance. And we're using V8 because the sweet spot, the unique selling point of this model is that it's able to use an AI generated image of my character as a style reference. Now, it won't be 100% duplicating my character's styles or very fine details, such as the jacket on the character or how the pattern looks on the shirt inside the jacket. It won't replicate those exactly in the generated video. But then, this reference to video concept, you can think of it like the IP adapter, where you'll have different styles and put my source videos here. For example, I got the TikTok dance videos, and then it will use that for generating videos as a style reference. So, as you can see at the bottom here to show the result, it won't be exactly the same face or character that gets put into the control net motion skeleton model because this is just for image referencing in the top part of the VAE settings here. And even though you set the strength to the maximum, you still won't be able to get 100% exact same character in your generated video. And so far, that's what I've tested. Also, the backgrounds, I like the way this VACE AI model handles restyling using the background as a reference. Because if you just use a static image pasted in the back, it won't look natural. And there are some shadows going on when the character is moving. The ratio of the characters standing on here is very accurately representing the characters actually standing on the stage. Whereas if you just remove the background and paste an image on top of that, or apply that to the generated image, you'll end up looking a little awkward in some moments, some movements. It also doesn't blend naturally with the character, like the shadows and overall video performance. So, in some ways, using vase for backgrounds, I like this approach. Even back in the days of Animate Diff, I didn't prefer having a static image for referencing the backgrounds. And as you can see in my previous YouTube shorts, some demos in there, even flickering animations or movement in the backgrounds, I still don't prefer using a static image as a replacement for the background. That's the whole point of making things move naturally, you know, because we are making a video. Therefore, here, I've tried multiple references, just like the reference to video that I showed here, the t-shirt, the character with the handbag, and also the futuristic character with Ray-Ban sunglasses, all able to reference multiple characters, subjects, or objects in the generated video. The same concept can be applied to control net video to video 
when we have three references. So in this case, I've combined it together into one image canvas, so it will allow the vase to process at this and see this as all the references in this canvas. Therefore, we have the two characters and the performance stage as the background image that can be used in the text prompt to add a little bit of description. It's a similar concept like Ace and Flux, where we're using context in the image generation. Then the same concept applies also in Vase. We can use the context of the text prompts. We can just do text prompting to identify which characters belong to which positions of the open pose character. I want the left position of this character to be my black jacket Asian dancer and the purple tank top with jeans. They're going to represent the right side of this open pose skeleton. Then what you're going to do in my case here, I'm just using a text prompt to use the in context method to generate these videos. And of course, you can also use a more complex way, such as using segmentation masking to identify the source videos, getting only the character on the left and generating each character separately by image referencing. But then that won't be time efficient. You'd have to spend a lot of time just to generate something. And therefore, yeah, that would work as well. But in my case here, most of the videos I just need to handle three references, then that's going to be using this method. And also, we're going to use Olama and Olama connected to Alama 3.2 vision for the VLM handling. We're able to get descriptions of how the character looks in the image. And then throughout this, as my reference for the text prompting, I rarely use that image description or image captioning directly connected to my text prompt. Rather than that, I just join all those strings together here and I cherry pick whichever stuff I need to use for my real actual text prompt for the video generation. Because sometimes, even if you use ChatGPT or any of the top models on the market right now, using the vision language model way is still going to give you some extra content from the video or the image. So at that moment, I won't automate it for joining all this string and directly connect it to my text prompt. Rather than that, I'll just show the joined image captioning result here and I'll cherry pick whichever one I really need for the actual video generation that I want to emphasize and describe about uh, my reference objects and uh, put that into my generated video. The other parts of the workflow here are pretty simple, just like the VAs we've done in the last two videos. Talking about VAs, we're using the VA settings. This is the most important thing we need. And the sampling, it's just, you know, nothing special needs to be said about the settings here. For the sampling steps, I'll just recommend around 30 for better results in your video generation. And then the second pass, I did this on purpose. Here's the refinement tile upscale. I find this really practically useful because the tile upscale LoRa receives my first batch of image frames or the first sampling video. I'm able to do a little upscale here, but of course it will take a lot more time in your video generation. So for example, I can upscale this when I receive the first sampling video and then I do a 1.5x or even 2x upscale of the resolution before I pass it into image blur. It's able to do that this way to have higher resolutions of videos in my second pass rendering. As we've used before in animate diff, we can use N and latent upscale. But then of course you can use higher fix or something like that in animate diff AI videos like in 12.1. Here we have the tile LoRa, which again puts this group as a higher fix concept to do another second pass sampling here, which the tile LoRa models I've mentioned in the previous videos. And also, there's another method that runs without the tile LoRa and just uses sampling and denoise for better video enhancement for the second pass of video to video. And you can check that out if you want to find more detail about that. So here, this is the example of the way you run. Something I have to mention is that the VA's control net video to video cannot maintain consistency for each batch of video to video generation. Because first, this is the con of this so far that I've tested. You have limited image frames that you can run in V8. By default, in 1.2.1, it's 81. I've tried it. The maximum we can do is 129 frames. You can set the video length here and it will be applied to the load video as well. And each time you generate for each batch, maybe you start from skip frame zero and then another batch, the second batch, maybe add another 81 frames. So you're going to skip the first 81 frames here. 
Then, in the second batch, even if you have the same prompt and the same reference image in the prompting here, you will have a very slight difference in the result. So, like the examples that I showed here that I've done previously, this is using the same workflow that I just did. The first batch here, the first few seconds, it's the same style. You see, all the backgrounds are the same. And then eventually, you come to the second half of this duration of the video. You see the backgrounds and the character outfit have a little bit of change here. Although they have the same color, the styles of clothing and the background are similar, but it's not exactly the same thing that you saw in the first few seconds here. So, because it's using text prompts and using the reference as the style reference, it's not exactly using an image to animate your next seconds of the video. So, it won't be able to get 100% the same styles. Basically, if you put more references in your video generation, so let's say I have three right now, if I put even four or five, it will be less accurate for handling each reference. But then I've tried out, if I use just one reference, it's able to do pretty much the exact same style as the reference image. So the more I add in the referencing for the VAs, the less accuracy it becomes for each reference image. Whereas when I use the one 2.1 fun control video to video, I'm able to get a very coherent style throughout all the video batches that I'm using with the same video. So let's say in this video here, I got the frame cap maximum of 569. And of course, you can't load all 569 frames in one batch in one 2.1, or even in the future, maybe we'll have one 3.1 as well. You can't just load everything in and load all the image frames in the same batch and just click run, execute, right? You know, if you have an H100, then that might happen. But most of you guys with consumer PCs, that might not happen. And for one 2.1 fun control, it's able to load about 200 image frames, which is really good already for what it can or is capable of loading in your VRAM. This isn't about how many image frames this AI model is capable of loading. It's about how many VRAMs your computer is capable of handling. That's the problem. So the way of using WAN 2.1 fun control is more coherent because you're using the image as the first frame of reference for the styles and the AI models are going to base on this reference for the restyling of the video. It can use open pose, line art, or whatever control net models you have. And the good thing is that the fun control of WAN 2.1, you can use multiple control net preprocessors combined into one control net reference motion guide. So through this motion guide that I call, you can put that as the control video image in one fun control. And I've talked about this when Fun Control does videos in the previous video. I won't go through too much detail of that, but just I want to mention that the overall performance and coherence of the styles, I'm able to do pretty good throughout the whole entire video because I'm able to use the same image right here as the first image frame as the reference and then just use different batches of image frames on the low cap here, the loading frame cap here. Maybe, you know, skip the first 200 frames in the second batch, and then you have another movement of the dancer. Then, of course, you'll have another motion guide movement in the control net, but your image frames aren't changing for the first style of image frames. So, therefore, you'll always get the same character throughout the whole video. Whereas in Vase, you're going to change a little bit because this is a reference of an image. This isn't going to be your first image frame as the processing of image to video. The way Vase does it is using reference as videos. That's the main point of this paper we're talking about. So you guys have to realize that before you want to do it. It depends on what kind of video you want to generate. If you want to generate a short video, like a few seconds in length, then of course using VAs is so flexible because you can just reference a character like in these examples, having Naruto do the motions here. But if you have a long video length, this isn't suitable for TikTok dance videos, I would say for VAs. But then the Wang Fun Control is more suitable for those TikTok dance videos. So that's so far what I've found out between these two methods. Although it's using ControlNet as the video to video generation method, we're able to have very precise motions because we use ControlNet rather than just rely on text prompts. But then the way of using these two methods is totally different 
the reference to video using VAs is more capable and offers more flexibility when it comes to making video stories. You want to have a quick way because using one image as a reference doing different video scenes, you can able to do consistent styles of characters in different background views, different camera shots like that, like, you know, five seconds, no problem. But if you go to like 30 second videos, like this TikTok dance, it's better performance or these styles of coherence are able to be done using one 2.1 fun control because it's using just one image as the style reference and we're able to have throughout the whole entire TikTok dance video the 30 seconds generated with the same image. Even though we're using different batches of image frames here, we still able to get the same style, same character outfit. So that's the conclusion so far from my testing. And yeah, check it out for the VAs and then the one 2.1 fun control. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.